get a statement from her diagnostic doctor that the Gerson therapy cured her. The Mayo Clinic went into a panic mode because the doctor did want to appear on camera, but he was cut off. It became a waiting game. He would much appreciate it. He'd be making a big difference for the treatment of cancer and the environment. The answer came with the police, and they ushered her away, thinking she was a terrorist. As a result, the doctor is quitting the Mayo Clinic to work without such restrictive boundaries. But there are many others. In 1986, I was diagnosed with pancreas cancer, which has spread to my liver, gallbladder, and spleen. The doctors told me I had three months to live, to go home, get my finances in order, and prepare to die. She did the Gerson therapy over 20 years ago. Garrett remembered where he started with his homeschool lesson. It all came back to him quite quickly. No, I don't think there's any evidence that anybody's ever been cured by uh, Gerson therapy. It's, it's, it's not right from any aspect at all. Well, has even, the Gerson therapy ever uh, cured a cancer patient? Well, of course not. They won't even release their records. I don't believe there's any proof that the Gerson therapy works. In other words, Charlotte Gerson was lying. There are laws against healing cancer. The doctor is not allowed to try anything else. He must use only those treatments that have already proven to be failures. Imagine what we could do if this could be accepted. What I'd like to see is some proof, some good scientific proof. Scientific proof, scientific proof, scientific proof, proof. The cancer industry is big business, using useless treatments such as chemotherapy and radiation, and continues to persuade the public that they're still searching for a cure. A documentary called Healing Cancer from the Inside Out by Mike Anderson put it well. The American Cancer Society was formed with the backing of John D. Rockefeller, and it has functioned as a mouthpiece for the cancer industry, not the public, ever since. The American Cancer Society's mission statement says, they are dedicated to eliminating cancer as a major health problem. The Chronicle of Philanthropy reports, however, that the ACS is more interested in accumulating wealth than in saving lives. The ACS, in fact, is the wealthiest nonprofit in the world, with net assets over $1 billion. Not surprisingly, it has consistently been given the lowest rankings in charity evaluations. Despite this wealth, its aggressive fundraising campaign pleads poverty and laments the lack of available money for cancer research. Aside from high salaries and overhead, most of what is left in the ACS budget goes into research that directly benefits pharmaceutical and radiological companies. What you see from studies conducted over the last 50 years is that for our major cancers, the effectiveness of conventional treatments is far less than a sugar pill. Board members of the American Cancer Society have included herbicide and pesticide manufacturers. Before Garrett returned to Alaska, there was one more person he wanted to meet. His name is Jay Cordich, known by millions as the Juice Man. Jay is responsible for selling close to $1 billion of juicers throughout the world. Well, Garrett, you know, I've been doing this now since 1948, ever since I had cancer of the urinary bladder. You know, uh, when I think back, I just finished playing football for the University of Southern California, and uh, I was drafted by Curly Lambeau and the Green Bay Packers. And then this urinary problem started. I started to pass blood, and I found out it was, I had a tumor in my urinary bladder. And I had remembered a class that I had on one of my physiology classes, uh, human anatomy classes, and I had inadvertently read about Dr. Max Gerson treating Dr. Albert Schweitzer, you know? And I figured, my God, after I found out I had cancer of the bladder, I figured if, if this uh, treatment was good enough for Dr. Albert Schweitzer, it's gotta be good enough for me. Never believe that much good could come out of it. This, this is the juice that saved my life when I had cancer of the bladder. The gruesome treatment, carrot and apple. 
because of that, I'm here. All the drinks that I made, and I, I continue even today, and this has been how long? Wow, 1948. My words of advice to you, bring the power of plants into your body. There's nothing like freshly made juices to nurture your 100 trillion cells. Garrett was now six miles from home. His homeschool lesson was officially over. The memories of the trip still glowed red hot in his mind. Specifically, how could he possibly forget a woman who carries on her father's work relentlessly against all opposition? Who carries the torch of a way of life that is health care, not some government agency's plan hatched with a collection of drug companies? The boy does believe in hope. He believes he has a future. He believes that environmental issues that confront humanity will dissolve into collective solutions. After all, this is our only home, and we are rational human beings. see hope on the local level. Garrett couldn't wait to bring this fresh pressed carrot juice to his neighbor John. I'd like to see some scientific proof. Our other neighbor, Bob, the one that milks the goats and was quite skeptical, was really liking what he was hearing. And so was his wife, up until... Okay, so here you want to add three tablespoons of coffee into your uh, boiling water. Then you want to let it simmer after for 12 minutes. And uh, I pour it in a quart jar and add water so it um, ends up being a quart. Um, then you... Connect the tube to your arse, then you let the coffee drain into your arse, then uh, you let it sit for 12 minutes, then you release it into the bathroom toilet. son, and for that, I'll be forever grateful. For each of us eventually, 
Whether we're ready or not, someday it will come to an end. There will be no more sunrises, no minutes, hours, or days. All the things you collected, whether treasured or forgotten, will pass to someone else. Your wealth, fame, and temporal power will shrivel to irrelevance. It will not matter what you owned or owed. Your grudges, resentments, frustrations, and jealousies will finally disappear. So too your hopes, ambitions, plans, and to-do lists will expire. The wins and losses that once seemed so important will fade away. It won't matter where you came from or on what side of the tracks you lived at the end. It won't matter if you're beautiful or brilliant. Even your gender and skin color will be irrelevant. So what will matter? How will the value of your days be measured? What will matter is not what you bought, but what you built. Not what you got, but what you gave. What will matter is not your success, but your significance. What will matter is not what you learned, but what you taught. What will matter is every act of integrity, compassion, courage, or sacrifice that enriched, empowered, or encouraged others to emulate your example. What will matter is not your competence, but your character. What will matter is not how many people you knew, but how many will feel a lasting loss when you're gone. What will matter is not your memories, but the memories that live in those who loved you. A life lived that matters is not of circumstance, but of choice.